Okay, this meeting is properly posted in all normal posting places. Make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor then say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. We have a student showcase. Yeah, we did. You welcome up some of our sixth grade staff as well as sixth grade students. Uh, to talk a little bit about their new uh, learning environment a little bit. So, come on up. We'll go back here. Caroline, 
and wear the vultures because they're softer, so you're not like leaning up against the back that hard. My favorite, the one that you can just sit down, it has a backrest and like, you can like wiggle back and forth. And you can get your wiggles out. And or the ball chair too. So. My favorite would probably be the regular chair, but it has the box under it, which allows you to rock back and forth, which makes it a bit more, I guess, stable. It makes it concentrate a bit more, I guess. And that's really neat. That's what we've found is the kids have experimented and they've been able to find what works for them. And they just make those choices on their own. And it's pretty cool to see that. And we do have some cafe high chairs, which is really nice, especially in sixth grade. We do have a variety of heights. So we have some students that are um, much taller than others, and so some that really like to have the taller chairs so that they don't they don't feel like they're just, you know, all scrunched up. Um, and also, stand them too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the cafe height mm -hmm. tables are great for standing, so they can stand and work as well. These are right from the survey. Um, this is by one scare I think made the survey, right? So here's some data about which ones do you want more of in the classroom? The ball chairs are very popular. Uh, we each have two in our classrooms. And I think, Mr. Clink, we were, that the teachers were in agreement too that we would like more of those as well. Uh, this one is, what do you think we could have less of in the classroom <laughs> and the regular chairs? We do have some chairs that don't move. The shorter chairs don't move. The tall chairs don't um, allow for a wing length, but everything else does. So. so this is Mr. Clint's room before. And that's his room after. Classroom design improves my learning. And some more closing thoughts. So 
the students all have their own opinions and preferences, and what's nice is that that's reflected now in the furniture, because there's many different options. They can have the regular chairs or the tall chairs. They have a lot of different options for their preferences. And we're, of course, excited that they're excited to go to our rooms. So everybody's happy. <laughs> I was, a, I was a planned spectator tonight. Oh. I'll bring Mr. Clink into this. Um, I know, I think, Caroline, somebody said there's a lot more room in the classrooms, right, this year? Yeah. Um, one of the things that our staff did, and I think with the help of Mrs. Iwanski, is we really took a look at how much teacher space was actually in a room. And we found that there was uh, basically the, what this research would show is, is every, what was it, 20, 15%? 20 to 25 percent was devoted just to teacher stuff. The desk, the bookshelves, the this, the that. Um, if you can go to Mr. Clink's room, uh, you could do the, the before picture. Um, Mr. Clink and Mr. Hanrahan and all of our sixth grade teammates um, said, holy cow, there is a lot of teacher space in here. So they decided they were going to take out the teacher space and make it 100 percent almost kid space. So if you go to the new picture, Mr. Clink now has um, the little podium there, and he's got a, where he's at right now is his conferring desk, basically where kids come up, and that's movable on wheels and things like that. And there's a small little table right there. That is Mr. Clink's teacher stuff. Because now, him and Mr. Hanrahan made an office. So they now have an office. So when we talk about more room, well, our teachers did make a very cognizant effort to say, let's make our classrooms for our kids. So that really opened up an awful lot of space uh, for everybody. And you'll see that same thing in Sarah and Becky's room. Becky's new to our school, so she didn't have a lot of things. And we just took all of it out. Yeah, she didn't have a choice. <laughs> and I know Sarah went, and Sarah did the same thing and said, let's make our classrooms specifically for our kids, and let's find a different adult space uh, from that standpoint, too. So, um, so our staff, this is, a, this is a change for them, too, as well. And we did go in, and the board had a lot of the same questions about, well, what happens if there's only two of something? Caroline, you said, oh, I want to get there and get the bouncy chair or the, the, the soft seating. The Sarah's already there. <laughs> um, but, and that's something we are going to invest more in. Uh, last month, we talked about Mrs. Kubish's room for the sixth grade math. Does anybody have sixth grade math? I do. Uh, so the feedback that we receive from the kids is going to help drive sad. that purchase. So we do have more, we do have that soft seating coming, and that's going to be there. So um, the balls that are starting to wear a little bit, we actually had the wrap in and we said this shouldn't be happening. So they are going to be replacing it with a more, um, a more durable vinyl and more durable product. So we have brought that to the attention of the designer so that will be fixed um, from that standpoint too as well. So um, the other things when they talk about, you know, we, we, if you saw up there, they didn't need more standing height. You know, what do they want more of? Because we made sure there was a lot of different options. Um, so there's there's a lot of things like because I think we've got probably standing height for about 12 kids I think we think about in a lot of the areas that either through the genius bars or through some of the standing seating so we have really equipped those classrooms with with a lot of uh, standing options as well too so but this really is helping us drive a lot of those furniture future purchases and a little bit later in the meeting you'll hear a little bit more about a learning lounge that we want to bring to light for our 7th and 8th graders. So, which you guys will be a 7th grader next year. So, uh, because now the challenge is, and I think Katie threw in one of our pre-meetings here this week is, is okay, what's the plan? How, because these kids go from this, we, uh, we are gonna be devising a plan and bringing something to the board as we take a look at that 7th and 8th grade year as well. So, so thank you. Any questions from anybody? Girls, so much for coming in. Mr. Dobbin, has got a little something for you. I've got something for you. Thank 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 you. You did something just for showing up. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody.
do a motion and a second. Are there any additions, corrections? All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Both the same sign. Motion's carried. We have the financial report to Bill Wilson. Uh, Chris is not here. <laughs> Does that, no. mean we set up Somebody Does that mean we don't do it this month? <laughs> Uh, check numbers 553677 through 553677-415.57. Direct deposit numbers 9000-44821 through 9000-044933-142,797. Uh, direct deposit numbers 9000-44934 through 9000-44. Four five zero four four for one hundred and forty four thousand seven hundred forty four dollars and fifty three cents. Wire transfers, payroll liabilities, wire numbers two zero one seven zero zero one one two through two zero one seven zero zero one two one ninety eight thousand three hundred seventy dollars and fifty one cents. Total payroll three hundred eighty six thousand three hundred twenty seven dollars sixty one cents. Accounts payable check numbers. 52437 through 52490, $286,947. AP wire transfers 2017 00122 through 2017-00122. $9,484.01. Credit card transactions 0720, $36,031.38. And credit card transactions 1718000036 and 1718000045 for $40,883.90. ACH direct deposits 1718000037 through 1718000062, $5,371.09. Total accounts payable of $378,718.02. Total disbursements seven hundred and sixty five thousand forty five dollars and sixty three cents. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions, concerns? All in favor of approving the financial report and bill listing, say aye. Aye. Opposed the same sign. Motion is carried. Delegation to be heard. I don't have anybody that said they would like to speak. So we're moving on from that to administrative report. We have a donation. Yeah, we would like to thank uh, PTO for the donation in August for the Gaga Pit materials. They, they purchased the structure in the wood in the amount of $2,726.88. Um, that is a hit basically between the hours of 8 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Um, during football, it's the hit before football practice, and then as soon as after, everybody rushes over. So they've been a great addition to, to our playground, to our play for our community, not only our schools, too. So a big thank you for, for the partnership with PTO in this, uh, this great game. Are there any issues with being concrete base? Well, it's interesting. We were just talking about that. Uh, we met with a, uh, well, we'll, we'll probably, we'll finalize that, but we, we're working on some turf being installed on the, uh, on the concrete. So in pursuit of a contractor for our, uh, our playground, and uh, he was talking a little bit about maybe we'll put some turf down. So, so that might be coming. Maybe more to come on that. Okay, more to come on that. I just wondered if we had ripped up knees or anything in the... Uh, no the substantial room? casualty numbers have been reported. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the weeds of all well, the other most kids, most kids get out and they go, it's not bad enough, and they get back in. So, My foot play, football players get hurt a lot and they haven't gotten hurt on the gaga pits, so. <laughs> Side note. Okay, we'll make a motion to approve the donation from PTO for the gaga pits, gaga pits in the amount of $2,726.88. I'll second. A motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor then say aye. I oppose same sign. Motion is carried. And we are on two personnel actions. Yeah, we would like to thank uh, Ian Melnick, a former student of ours who has worked for us the last uh, several months. As he has uh, schoolwork is starting to take a little bit, a uh, little bit more, more time from him. So he 
we would like to thank Ian for his efforts and wish him the best of luck. So uh, just would like to present uh, the letter of resignation of Ian Melnick and just looking for a motion to approve that. I'll make a motion to approve the letter of resignation from Ian Melnick. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor then say aye. Uh -huh. All the same sign, the motion is carried. Uh, Dean, just as a quick follow up on that, we do uh, we did send out an email to our families because we are looking to replace that now. And uh, if anyone knows of a high school student, preferably we, we usually try to keep it within the Merton family. But uh, if, if not, anybody who's looking for a, a really great part time job, we've got one. So as a high school student, so that's out there. For information, I have one piece of information I'd like to bring to the board, and that is basically the results, a very preliminary result to our spring break survey. Um, the region has, through the last several years, been having conversations about when do we have spring break. Many schools or many states uh, have a set spring break, or regions have a set spring break. For us, it's always been kind of tied to the Easter holiday, either before Easter holiday or after the Easter holiday. Well, this year Arrowhead and the consortium wanted to possibly be a little bit more aggressive and not wait for the region or the CESA area to possibly look at setting a firm spring break. So uh, the Arrowhead feeders, in conjunction with some other local school districts uh, who are ordering us, uh, sent out to their families a spring break survey, and there were basically three questions on the survey. One is, is would you like a consistent spring break year after year? And that consistent spring break would be labeled either the last week of March or the first week in April. Okay, For that one question, we had 81%. And this was close to 300 responses. So we had a good, good representation from Merton. But we had eight, over 81% said they would like a set spring break. And then further, the second question was, is would you support a consistent spring break if we would possibly, again, possibly, still allow you know, typically the Friday before Easter and the Monday after Easter. Okay, because we just wanted to throw that out there too to say, hey, how important would that be to folks to keep those that time? And we had 88% of our families say yes, they would support that um, as well. The last question we asked was, is what would you prefer, right? You have the last week in March or the first week in April or no preference. And uh, the largest uh, response of 38% was the first week of April. So that was only at 38%. However, another 37% was no preference. And we had 24% favor the last week in March. So uh, we will be taking this information to the Arrowhead superintendents as we look to uh, take a look at a preliminary draft next month at the October. We'll take a look at the preliminary 18-19 uh, school year for the students and uh, give that to show that to the board and gather some feedback for approval in November. So uh, it looks like this is pretty consistent from what I'm hearing from the other K-8s as well as Arrowhead that it seems like our community would really support a consistent break and uh, now we just have to set that as well. What is the calendar impact for having a consistent <clears throat> first week of April and the Friday, you know, Good Friday. That's, that is really the issue. Um, the calendar impact, for, it seems like people don't really care about that no. based on the percentage. Correct. Right. Um, it wasn't, very, it, it wasn't important. It, if we don't go to school, and we'll, we'll get into this more next, next month, but the Monday after spring break would be an added day off. Okay, because we've always had, for, for Merton, we've always gone the Friday before Easter, in the following week. So we've always had six days off for spring break, right? With this type of scenario, if you give a week-long spring break, in addition to the two days sandwiching Easter, you now have seven. So there is an impact there. Um, when you take a look at many of the schools, like for instance, the private schools in our area who don't follow our spring break, they go back to school the Monday after Easter. So that's pretty typical. So. I think when you take a look at that question, Phil, and that's something we're gonna to have to really wrestle with, is, is do we go to school that Monday after Easter? Because that is an additional day off, because or you're gonna recoup that would probably win. prefer to have the Friday off rather than the Monday, right? Correct, yes, we would, correct. Right, right. We, would, we would look to have Monday off and 
we have to take a look at dates because that begins Friday off and, and go on Monday. And go on Monday, right? Because we were in our preliminary conversations, they were like, "Well, we should do that." Well, when you take a look at the private schools, they come back on that Monday. They have what would be called a Good Friday, and then they come back to that problem. So yeah, but that's going to be a question we're going to have to battle with. Correct. And then there'll be some years where it's not issued. Easter's currently correct. Yep. Some years it'll line up. If we go with the first week in April, but we possibly if Arrowhead decides, it could be the last week in March. Could we be the last week in March, right? And we will go with what Arrowhead does because I think Arrowhead's got some different motives as well when you take a look at the athletic calendar as well as possibly their academics prior to the AP testing. You know, instead of having, they prefer to have that break a little earlier so that you've got a good four to five weeks prior to those first AP tests. So um, it will be a community effort, but if Arrowhead moves forward and says this is our spring break, which for instance, the last week in March, um, I would recommend we follow suit. Because, so, take care of that issue of years when we have late Easter and then you've got that short period after Easter to the end of the school year, which makes it a little tougher. Right, right. Yeah, there's a lot of pros and, and ultimately it looks like our families are really in favor of let's set it, let's get it right around that, that end of March, early April, and you're right, Dean, sometimes it's going to line up nicely where it's not affected. Other times we're going to have a week off then you're going to have four days back to school and you're going to have Easter. That's just the way the ball rolls sometimes. But more to come on that. We'll have a proposed calendar out to the board uh, in October. Okay, we're on committee reports. Um, um, nothing to just, no, no committees. We will be, uh, we do have a student achievement committee meeting on October 11th and we also will be setting a finance committee coming up here in October after we get after October 15th because we've got two more pieces to the uh, the finance puzzle coming in October 1st is the aid I'm sorry no uh, property value and the 15th thereabouts is the amount of state aid we received so we'll bring the finance committee together and then we'll also be pulling the facility team together this upcoming month to really take a look at what we've achieved in our 10-year plan Okay, we're on to the principal's reports. Hi there. Do we need to? I'm Mike and he's Jay. What's a, a piece of criteria that you go, it was a good start? And we have ours, but what do you say? What do you think when someone says, and hey, how'd the school year start? What do you say? Well, I was fed a little information. I was really <laughs> impressed with uh, your attendance the first day of school. Uh, I think you had two in the primary building on, mm -hmm. and you had 100%. Yeah. That, that's an incredible start. That's parents that are uh, engaged with their children. Education is important. Right. So that that to me is a great, great indicator. Great start. Being right. fully staffed. Yeah. Right. That's good. Because sometimes that's an issue. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You know, having the facilities so ready, to ready to go. There's always last minute. You know, trying to remodel the library. <laughs> uh, not such an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> Literally, that uh, right. I mean, I know John and the rest of the team were busy the last couple of days before school started trying to get everything up and going, up and ready. Okay. So. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I read your participation in the family night. Mm. Yeah. How about the ends? <laughs> Well, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> the feedback you're getting, um, the positive far outweighs the negative. 
Well, Jay and I thought it was uh, one of the best ever. And then, as, as you can see there, those are the things that, uh, that we rely on. And for the primary school, the first fire drill is always interesting and when uh, the map mainframe had a hiccup on Wednesday and Tuesday and Wednesday or Thursday, or we bumped our time, so we bumped the, the fire drill so everybody had a chance to finish their map in a good time. But our first fire drill was was darn good too, so those are those are great. Any comments? I, I just um, our staff both buildings just goes above and beyond. I, I don't think people can see it on the outside. You have to be at the, you know, around and, and see it all the time. So I encourage you, if you have an opportunity to come in and just see our staff at work because you'll just be, you'll be amazed. And, and at the intermediate school, we have family information nights for our fifth, sixth, and seventh and eighth grade families. And uh, the fifth grade night was in here and you guys don't even come close to the attendance we had from the fifth grade families were in here. Great questions asked uh, of our entire fifth grade staff. Um, it's just a nice nice way for them to get started. Our, our Merton uh, mentors with our National Junior Honor Society really made those fifth grade kids feel like they were part of the school right away from the start. So that was all really good. And um, I just I just can't say enough about um, the attitude of our kids, the politeness of our kids. When you hold the door and they say thank you, when you count off by five in the lunch line and they say thank you when they're not when they're number six realizing they're number one next because I can only count to five. So that's just an inside joke too, Phil. So um, you can't get all the kids through the lunch line at one time, and they've they've been able to handle the new the new lunch menus really well, and it's just it's just been going it's been going really really smoothly. Can't have a principal's report without flashing the library a little bit. <coughs> There's just a couple of shots. I mean, you can see the kids in the corner with the book, and that was an orientation day with Mrs. Waller. With a couple of third grade classes, and then the the tree, which will become an icon uh, for years to come. But uh, those are a couple of terrific shots lately, and and the library has become this uh, major hub of what's going on in our school. Uh, with some of the things that the sixth grade staff was telling about their their space, the library has become that kind of space in the primary school. And here were a couple of shots of kids in, our, in the book room uh, scanning their books they're using for Reader's Workshop. And so we have Jen Roundhouse there helping out the kids. And so the books are on the shelf. And as the kids go through different genres and different units of study, they're able to check out the books to fill their book boxes. And here uh, Jen is training them to do that. So no more responsibility for the, for the students. Mrs. Roundhouse has been unbelievable with our intermediate school library getting that organized and the book rooms at both schools has just been phenomenal and everything, every, she dots every I and crosses every T and makes sure everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to do so that all the books come back for all the kids to be able to use at a later time. And since this... this that was not today because there was no sweatshirts today. You know what? I thought, I, I thought I'd bring back a little bit of Wisconsin weather and how it's going to be on Thursday or Friday. Um, Yes, but it's uh, just a little background and, uh, and there's play in action you can get, and it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, one thing I had concerns about is how the kids would take care of the game and for the most part, they're doing a heck of a job. Uh, I'm really proud of them and the only thing I wish I could do better of is getting kids to play in there with just tennis shoes, not flip-flops or sandals or those kinds of things, but um, other than that, it's been They've been having a great time, and so it's thanks for uh, for our Gaga Pits. So I have just a few pictures here that I was going to show. In the upper left-hand corner, that's uh, our our mentors. As the fifth graders come in on the first day, they they make this tunnel every year, so the kids all come in so their first high fives and fist bumps and all going through. The middle picture here is our seventh and eighth grade staff. And um, I already sent this presentation to you. If you click on where it says Merton Way, there's a, a YouTube video. Katie Frank Corr wrote, a, wrote lyrics to a song that the kids will never want to sing again that used to be really popular to them. But it's all about the uh, be kind, be safe, do your job. And the staff got out and danced. It was a hoot. I really wish I would taken a video. But uh, they had a really good time. 
On that same day, this picture up here, these are all the seventh and eighth graders that are in small groups doing some cooperative uh, activities. So the first part of the day, they saw all, they went all of their classes. The second part of the day, they talked about the Merton Way and, and having school uh, pride and so on. Uh, down here, we have uh, some of our readers. That's one of those cafe tables they were talking about. Uh, this is Kubish in her room. Uh, she's just done a great job coming to take over the extra section of fifth and sixth grade. I hope you got that letter from Mrs. Jones and the fifth and sixth grade teachers about uh, supporting our small class sizes in math and language arts. We really appreciate that. Here's some fifth graders who found some comfy fire safe bean bags to read on. Just thought I'd throw that one there. Mr. Wagner here doing CPR, that circle of power and respect. He does that within the first couple weeks of school. And he teaches kids how to accept um, a positive comment and how to give a positive comment because that's not always very easy to do. And then the last page here, um, the top part are is, is a Google Expedition in Mrs. Nimchak's social studies room. So on September 11th, they took a tour of uh, the, uh, the site of the memorial, the 9-11 memorial, and part of the, uh, uh, the museum. That was really kind of cool. Uh, this one here, I, oh, that's, that's in Ms. Frank Corr and Mrs. Hess's room. They're jotting some things during uh, their mini lesson. Down here is Annie Booker shooting archery. I am behind all of the kids when they shoot the arrows. <laughs> And then down here were some sixth graders who went out and did some isometric drawings in the, uh, just outside in the, in the hallway. And here is the one and only Mr. Clink. We had an assembly at the end of, uh, uh, actually very early on Wednesday morning, our second Wednesday. And we talked about school pride and we, we had our cheers and all of that. And I asked the staff to mention what they were proud of. And I handed out a few microphones in the, uh, in the gym and Mr. Clink uh, took over for a little while. Uh, and uh, it was very heartfelt. He was just very proud of the sixth graders that had moved on to seventh grade, the new sixth graders that they have. But it's just amazing when you get all the kids there and you get some of the staff talking about how proud they are of the kids and how they just keep remembering that. So that uh, was really a cool day. You were in there for a little bit. Yeah. 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 That's it. And to wrap up the uh, oh. a little bit of uh, a little bit of humor. That's not really a dart in my head. But the guys have just been, and the ladies have just been tremendous as far as making our schools look absolutely terrific. And uh, so there's Darwin early in the morning when nobody can see him working. He's just about the 6.55. And he was drilling away, hanging this thing, and I thought it would be, he goes, it would be fun to see him in action. Because he's he's behind the scenes and does a lot of work behind the scenes, so uh, he shows you got a pretty good lather already going uh, from all Hardy's working. So uh, this is uh, Darwin, and he's still there trying to get out. <laughs> That's it. Thanks. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Question: What what are you hearing from the kids on travels so far? I have really not heard much one way or the other. To be completely honest with you, they still have the choices. Um, I, I really haven't heard anything but in our school. I mean, and I'm in the lunch line every day, and I haven't heard. The only thing I heard was one of the chicken things. He said, "Well, that really wasn't very good." I said, "Well, every once in a while we have a bad meal. I get that, but I had the same thing when we had Aviance. I'm never going to get that again." Yeah. So yeah. yeah, they like the pizza. The, the new pizza Pizza's is really cheap. a big thing. The you bread. Know. They're like, why can't we bring back the old bread for the, the sub sandwiches? Because that was a well. Uh, like a subway or a cousins or whatever it is, and it doesn't quite meet our guidelines. So, um, participation is positive, very, very positive, and obviously we're wrapping up our first month. But when we took a look at the first week, uh, in this building in particular, very, very high. We were close to 70, 75 percent participation in this building. That was the first week with the new, uh, with the new uh, offerings and things like that. So. I know we continue to work with Avianza, or not Avianza, Chartwells, because we have a Froyo machine coming. So as soon as we can get uh, that all taken care of from a power standpoint, so we'll be able to sell that from an a la carte as well. I've got a fifth grader and a seventh grader, and they love the pizza. The, you know, my daughter's like, hey, I love that they continue to change the grill up a little bit more, because that way she can get meatball subs and chicken nuggets on certain days. And I, I said, okay. But uh, I guess it really the, the proof will be in the pudding about when we take a look at participation. Um, 
as well. And this first month typically is a lower month of participation because they're trying to figure out menus just like, just like they are, just like our kids are. Um, and then ultimately too in September we, keep, we see a lot of, uh, you know, especially at the primary school uh, where our moms and dads want to really be, I'm going to make their lunch and they're going to do it and then all of a sudden that becomes a little tired and just go get hot lunch. Uh, the grab and goes. I know I've heard some kids talk about it. It's nice just being able to just grab something quick and go at this building too as well. So, breadsticks, breadsticks, huge. Breadsticks were great that first week. Wow, that's all I kept hearing was about breadsticks. So. Katie asked a question too about hey, what have we heard? When we switched to Aviance, I heard a lot. I haven't heard really any formal. From Aviance, negative. Question about your bean bag chairs. Do those have some kind of a uh, player poop tape? You'll have to talk to Mr. Nettsheim because he worked with PTO on those purchases. Yes, they were all fire code. Do, do they have a tag on them? California rating. I mean, just we have to make sure that they, <laughs> they do they, <laughs> that we don't lose those tags. Right. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, if you cut them off, you go to jail. Yeah, well, <laughs> Mr. Cole will uh, be out. He'll be out the door. He, door. he walks in here and he'll take her. You're killing me. <laughs> um, but you know, it, I know it's it's been a tough adjustment, but our staff has adjusted very, very well to our new expectations, not only from the district but the B and G department, because it has been a change. It really, really has, and they've 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 embraced it. You guys have helped with that though too. For, for supporting you know other opportunities you know so if we took out a bean bag we did the very best we could to replace that bean bag um, Jackie Conner for instance our guidance counselor had a lot of soft seating so we replaced the soft seating so Mary was very active in that too in pursuit of using some other I mean we didn't go through very very high you know Wayfair and some of those other places that we, we were able to really leverage some of that stuff because it doesn't have to be super super durable some of those other office areas that we needed to replace because it was going to be more light use compared to like a library where it's going to be used over and over and over. So, yeah, off to a good start. Yeah, great. So, um, our next up, I got a little presentation for everybody. We want to stay right here. Sure. First, first agenda item is uh, furniture and, uh, and and facilities. So, we uh, well, Jay's pulling it up, and again, I talked to the board a little bit about this. But what we would like to do is begin to really entertain uh, creating a seventh grade learning lounge. And uh, when we think of uh, a learning lounge, what we've been looking at for our seventh and eighth graders is trying to create an open space, a very flexible space, many spaces in which that we have available throughout our school, but when we think about our upstairs at the intermediate school, we don't have that ability. So what we're looking at from an administrative team and even from a staff is creating a 7th and 8th grade learning lounge. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, it's basically our second floor right now. What we're looking at is there's one interior classroom. And that interior classroom right now is currently used only second and third quarter uh, for health class every other day because that's when we deliver health to our 7th and 8th graders. The, uh, the other piece to that is, is during the middle of the day, right after lunch, we have study hall in there. So um, we are taking a look at utilizing all of our spaces and seeing how we can bring uh, a large group area, bring it to life, and really make it multifunctional. So a couple things we did before we get to a floor plan, thank you Mr. Posey, mm -hmm. is, um, first of all, we want to utilize our space, but we ultimately want to create flexible, engaging spaces where our kids want to go engage with each other, engage with a book, or just be comfortable in another learning environment. Um, and what we feel like is, is when we take a look at other areas of the building, we think of sixth grade, and you even heard how uh, one of our students said, boy, you know, I kind of feel bad that we only get to use it and it's not the library or anything. Well, the sixth grade utilizes the library quite a bit. It's right out their doors. They can go in, flexible spaces, soft seating, curl up and read a book, or let's be collaborative together. And that's really what we're really trying to design. So what we are really proposing, oops, let me get my, uh, 
things here, is, is what we we're proposing is this idea of a learning lounge. We asked our 7th and 8th grade staff, what would you do if we took down those walls? What would you do if you had a flexible space that would be available 24-7, we can use it for community, but what would they use it for? All right. Would you send students there? Well, again, on a scale of one to four, I would a lot is four. One is I wouldn't think about it. The one person who said, well, I don't know if I don't, that was a science teacher. He said, well, I've got everything I need in my own area. So again, all of them, eight, I, I should say not all of them, eight people were agreeable to it. Would you envision using instruction for that space? Again, we had our science teachers say, well, I really don't see a read for that possibly. Um, our co -taught, one of our co taught RLA staff said, well, I really, I, I don't need that space to teach it because I've already got a very large space. But it does give some flexibility to the rest of the group up there. Okay. Um, would you use this, this uh, space for students before school, after school? So again, another flexible space where kids can go and meet with staff or work, whatever it might be, before school, after school, lunch, another, another big area for us to work in. Okay. Then we also asked our staff, if we were to do this, what kind of furniture would you like to be placed in there? Uh, soft seating was a big one. You need table space, standing options. Desks weren't that big of a deal because again, we've got that in our own areas. Traditional chairs and then some alternative chairs. Alternative chairs being the wobble chairs or those ball chairs that our sixth graders love so much. So kind of envision that going up in that area. We even asked them what they want for colors if we were to do something. So, um, these are colors, so number three, you take a look at option three, which looks very similar, actually, eerie to our sixth grade furniture. Um, but that's where they thought they would like to, to kind of start the color palette moving down there. So our teachers highlighted they could use small group, relaxed and flexible area, that, that that part of the school doesn't have. So if we did want to do some flexible things or sit in soft seating, because right now, seventh and eighth grade, they have chairs, traditional chairs. That's it. So that's why it would be a relaxed and flexible area to be part of the school that we don't have up there. Not like the library, they just can't spew out into the library like sixth grade can. Alternative to students working or lying in the hallways, they've got a place to go. Reward environment, book clubs, outside of school activity meetings, okay? Place to hold our National Honor Society, a place to hold our student senate meetings. An alternative place for instruction, and we also talk about that peer tutoring type of aspect. Again, just a place where we can say, why don't we go here and let's work and be productive. Community, multifunctional space. And here's another bit. should have to check it out because we want to use it, but we want to go there when it's open. Include whiteboards for instruction, want bold boards, tactile surfaces to continue to display student artwork. Mix of seating options, including some traditional chairs for the adults. Uh, a refrigerator for items for students to bring at break the class or they store them in the lounge or the health room. Believe it or not, there are still, especially in our Spanish area, um, Becky Alberman is just so excited about this because that's right outside of her room. And Mary and I were giggling about the refrigerator. She's like, oh yeah, we need it. Science needs it and things like that for some presentations. So, so that leads us to basically what we've been doing to try to, to gear up with this. So we've been gathering some information. Uh, and that information includes basically what do we have to do from a facility standpoint to make this happen. Okay? Um, the, the, the big dream and the big, the big idea would be to conduct this work, take down the walls, or make this space um, basically the month of December. Okay? The walls that we would be possibly looking to tear down, um, we can do all the work within the space uh, while, while our students can continue to move in and out of classrooms because they've got multiple avenues to get in and out uh, based on some of these classroom design work there. So John's been working with uh, some contractors and uh, 
when we took a look at the scope of the project, uh, John said he could be the general because basically we have to demo, if we go this route, we'd have to demo a wall, demo two walls and a door, uh, which John, his team, including Jay, myself, and anybody else, and Jim's like, yeah, you'll get a sledgehammer going. Right? <laughs> anybody else who's interested? Um, we would demo the site ourselves because if we demo the wall, we would have to replace the ceiling. We take the ceiling out. We even can. The, the carpet, the floor surface, is still very usable, so we would re, repurpose those in other areas of the district. So we would do the complete demo. After you do the complete demo, then you're talking about a ceiling contractor, you're talking about a carpet contractor, you're talking about a painter. That's it. That's it. All in which John would, would, would really coordinate all of those those different contractors coming through so that's just one option that we have um, another option that was brought and I know the, the, the board and I'm talking to uh, Dean and Randy um, they talked about the opportunity or what would be what would happen if we tore those walls down you know when we talk about the futuristic you know what happens if enrollment goes up because right now it's not a space where we need for a, for a specific formal and traditional classroom um, it, that, that is an option, and actually we had Steve McGuire here because we do have those current walls. Steve was called in by John, he showed up today, and we did kind of